Hello friends, this video on thermal properties of matter part 20 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched all the videos from part 1 to part 19 before going ahead with part 20. So let us start with conduction. What is conduction? It is the transfer of heat between different parts of a body because of their temperature difference. So in case of conduction, the heat transfer will take place between different parts of the body because of difference in temperature. For example, think of your mom cooking something in the kitchen. What happens is when it is heated, when the pan is heated, the different parts of the pan get heated. Right? So the heat transfer takes place from different parts of the utensil. The bottom part of the utensil gets maximum heat because it is in direct contact with the fire. Then this heat gets transferred to the vegetables or the objects which are there inside the utensil. So this kind of heat transfer which takes place through different parts of the body is known as conduction. Now when I talk of conduction, I need to talk about something called thermal conductivity. Thermal conductivity tells us how good an object is as a thermal conductor or how good an object can transfer heat. So it is observed, don't worry, we will discuss what is thermal conductivity and its mathematical expression in the next slides. But as of now, you should know that thermal conductivity is maximum for solids and even in solids, metals have the maximum conductivity. So solids have greater thermal conductivity than liquids and liquids in turn have greater thermal conductivity of gases. Now let us try to understand the phenomenon of conduction in bit more detail. Let us suppose that you have two reservoirs or two systems which are represented in this blue. Let us suppose this block is at temperature Ta and this block is at temperature Tb such that Ta is greater than Tb. That means this block is hotter than this block. Now let us suppose I have a metal rod which is connected between these two blocks. So what will happen? Transfer of heat will take place between this first, reason, first block let us suppose this is first block, this is second block, right? So transfer of heat will take place between first block and the metal rod. Similarly, transfer of heat will take place between the metal rod and the second block. So what will happen here? Let us suppose if we say this end of the rod as point A and this end of the rod as point B. So where will the, what will be the direction of flow of heat? So since temperature at A is greater than B, so we can say that A is hotter than B, right? So how will the heat flow? Heat will flow. Heat flow will take place from A to B. So this is how heat will flow. So what will happen? After some time, a steady state will be reached. I mean, as heat keeps flowing from A to B, so A will keep losing heat and B will keep gaining heat. So a point will be reached when both of them will be at the same temperature. So then we say that a steady state is reached. So what happens in this case? The first block supplies heat at constant rate which transfers through the rod and given out to the second block. That means this block is giving heat and the heat is getting transferred through this rod and then the heat is supplied to this second block. Right? So this kind of mode of flow is called conduction. That means this heat is getting transferred through each and every part of this object that is of the metal rod. So in this case what do we say? We say that at when the steady state is reached that is at steady state rate of flow of heat is directly proportional to temperature difference and area. 
So the rate at which the heat will flow, it depends on the temperature difference between these two blocks and the area. So we can say that rate of flow of heat denoted by H is directly proportional to Ta minus Tb into area. I'm sorry, it is directly proportional to area and inversely proportional to length. So this will be A by L. So we can write it as H is equal to some constant, let us say K, A by L, T A minus T B. So what is this K? This constant K is known as thermal conductivity. So this value K determines how good conductor a particular substance will be. Thermal conductivity means how a particular substance conducts heat. Right? So thermal conductivity is depends on the nature of every substance. It is characteristics or characteristic of a particular substance. So in this case, what do we see? In conduction, what happens? The transfer of heat takes place through each part of the body. Right? So here what happens is the transfer of heat from block A to block B takes place through via this rod, via the metal rod. So at a steady state, when a steady state is reached, that is when both of them are at the same temperature. Now at a steady state, this particular block, that is block A, transfers heat at a constant rate and block B gets heat at a constant rate. So that steady state, the rate of flow of heat is directly proportional to the difference in temperature. It is directly proportional to the area or the cross-sectional area through which it moves and it is inversely proportional to the length of the metal rod. So we get this and we also define or introduce the term thermal conductivity which basically defines how good thermal conductor a particular substance would be. Now let us look at a few points on thermal conductivity. As I said, thermal conductivity defines how rapidly a substance will conduct heat. That is how good a particular substance is as a thermal conductor. Right? Greater the value of K, as I told, it is denoted by K. So greater the value of K, more rapidly it will conduct heat. Now small, similarly, smaller the value of K, less rapidly it, it will conduct heat very slowly. It is denoted by K. So what is what was the expression for thermal conductivity? That was the rate of flow of heat was equal to K A divided by L T A minus T B. So this K it was thermal conductivity. Now SI unit of thermal conductivity is Joule per second per meter Kelvin inverse. It is very simple. You can find out the unit from here. We can say thermal conductivity is equal to rate of flow of heat into length by area into 1 by Ta minus Tb. So from this you can say for heat it is Joule. Similarly for temperature difference it is Kelvin inverse. When I talk of length and area, so it comes out to be meter inverse. Length by area comes out to be meter inverse. And from where do we get the second inverse? This H is basically rate of heat flow. That means heat flow per unit time. So we get this unit. Or we can also write it as watt meter inverse Kelvin inverse because joule per second, that is energy per unit time, is nothing but power. So we can write it as watt. Now let us look at some application of conduction or thermal conductivity rather. Did you know why do houses made of concrete roofs get very hot during summer? Think of it. It would be if you observe you can find that this really happens. If, you, if your house's roofs are made up of concrete they get very hot during summer. What is the reason behind that? 
That's because the thermal conductivity of concrete is still not small enough. So because of which, though it is smaller than metal, I mean for metal their thermal conductivity is extremely high. That means metals are very good conductors of heat. They can pass heat very nicely and very quickly. But for concrete, their thermal conductivity is definitely lesser than metals, but still its thermal conductivity is not very small. Therefore, it is able to pass, it, is, it allows heat to pass through it. So it is able to transfer the heat. So whatever heat or the sun rays is there outside, it is able to transfer that inside the room. Therefore, people often prefer to give a layer of earth or foam insulation on the ceiling so that the heat transfer is prohibited and the room is comparatively cooler, right? So what is the reason that uh, the houses made of concrete roofs get very hot? Because thermal conductivity of concrete is not very small. Since it is not very small, therefore it allows heat to pass through it. Now, people staying inside, they can feel the heat. So it seems it feels hotter for them. So for their convenience, what, do, what they do, they sometimes give a layer of earth or a foam insulation on the ceiling so that even if the concrete allows heat to come inside, the foam insulation or the layer of earth will prohibit the heat from coming inside the room. As a result, the room will stay cooler. Now Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.